Hey guys, Keith here. Um, okay, so today's video I wanted to focus on a new tool that's been included in XLite. It's called XFade or CrossFade if you like, um, which is this application here. Now you won't find that XLite's installed an icon. You'll actually have to go into your program files, XLite's directory and find the executable and launch it from there. Um, what this application is, is an attempt to um, extend on a concept that was introduced a little while ago into XLites with the jukebox functionality. Um, for those of you that, sorry, that don't remember, um, within XLites, if you open a sequence, um, hang on, just make sure I got the right one. No, I didn't, hang on, I'll go back open. Uh, so when you open a sequence here, I've got this jukebox panel, which you can get at via the view, windows, jukebox uh, menu item. And what it does is it creates these buttons up here, which you can then assign to effects or groups of effects. It doesn't just have to apply to one single effect. Um, while you hook it up to one single effect, it will play everything that plays at the same time that that effect is playing. And then when you click on the buttons, over here, you can see that it um, it plays the effects that it's been wired up to. And for those who don't remember, the way you wire it up is you right click on it and you come in and you say, hey, I want this button to be wired up to the single line model, layer one, there's only one layer, and the particular timestamp that the thing is, or you can actually tie it up based on the effect description and you can give it a name. And when you give it a name, when you come up here and you put the hover the mouse over there, it tells you or gives you that name so that you can easily find it. And that's kind of great and it lets you flick between effects um, in a live sort of setting if that's what you wanted to do. But the problem is, is what happens if you want to sort of cross fade between effects? Well, that becomes really hard to do because there's, there's no way to do it. As soon as you click on the button, the, for, the effect just launches. You can't prepare the, the thing, you can't then cross fade into it. It's, it's kind of difficult to do. So I thought I, I've been kind of keen to sort of expand this capability, but there's no easy way to do it. And so what I've done is I've come up with another executable. Um, now this is number two. And the way it works is uh, there's a couple of things you, you need to prepare. Um, so first of all, it works between two copies of XLites. It'll actually work between XLites and other tools as well, but um, it, it does have some limitations at the moment and I will expand its functionality, but really it's gonna be based on input from people about what they actually need. So what I've got here is I've got two different sequences. Um, now technically, uh, um, could they be the same? I guess they could be the same sequence. There's no reason why it has to be a different one. But in this case, I've set up two sequences. Um, this one on here is going to be my right hand one. This one on here is going to be my left hand one. Um, now, an important thing in the settings is there is now this uh, crossfade X schedule uh, setting where you can set a port A or B. You can see that this is set up as port A and this one over here will be set up as port B. Um, when you start the second copy of XLites, it will automatically connect it to the other port that the first one was connected to. So they, they listen on different ports. If you start a third copy, it'll be disabled because you can only have two copies hooked up. Um, and so that port is, is basically how the, the XFade tool is gonna talk to um, the two copies of X lights that are running. So then we come to, to X fade. Now, it, it, if you, if you've used, uh, um, uh, Gladiator or even Madrix, you'd be kind of familiar with this concept where you have a bunch of presets. What do you know? There's 50 here and there's 50 here and there's 50 here and there's 50 here. Um, and then you have in the middle the ability to cross fade between the two. So at the moment, this is hard set to the left. So whatever's on this side is actually what's going to be displayed. And uh, if you move it across, and then it will obviously show what's on this side. And you can click the button and it will progressively move across in a nice smooth manner and you can control how quickly it moves. You can do it slowly by setting this to five seconds. Um, 
or you can do it really quickly by setting it to half a second and it jumps across. You can also slide it to the middle in half a second. Um, you can also type a time in up here. Um, basically, it's, it's any number you want and it will govern how quickly or slowly it goes across. Um, there's also some master brighting, brightness settings up here. So you can say, look, everything coming out of the left channel, I want at that level of brightness, everything at the right that level, or you can adjust them both together. Um, so kind of like a master brightness control. So how you set it up, um, basically what we want to do is we want to send our data out from our copies of X lights, but instead of sending it straight to the lights, we want to intercept that data and blend it together or cut one out and just let the other one through or so forth. And the way you set that up is in the setup tab here, is you set up this for E131. It's best to do E131. You can do Artnet, but there's some restrictions around Artnet. So whenever you have a choice, I would always use E131. And you send it to this special IP address, 127.0.0.1. Now that's a very special IP address and it basically says, send the data to this same computer. So don't send it out across the network, send it to the computer itself. Everyone's computer has this IP address. It's called the loopback IP address and it always results in the packet ending up back at the computer itself. Um, and this, uh, this one up here is going to be listening for that. Now notice how they both set to the same address. They're both sending out exactly the same universe. And the reason you want to do that is because it's going to match these two things up and it's going to decide which one lets the data through. So it, it really is as simple as that. Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to um, then send the data out to my controller. I have a little pixel stick sitting here. I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah, there it is, sitting there. Um, and we're gonna be sending the data to that. Um, and the way you set that up is you come into the configure screen here. Uh, up here, we say we're listening for E131 only. We're not gonna be listening for Artnet. Um, uh, the input and output interfaces, uh, they're set to a particular value or you can just default them. Uh, in this case, it's not going to make any difference. That's my IP address. Uh, this is the frame timing. So this is the timing of the packets that I'm going to be sending out to my controller. Now, it doesn't really matter what the frame timing is down here. Um, this is the frame timing that will be used to send data out. So you can set this at 25 milliseconds. You can set it this at 50 milliseconds and it will take care of it. Now, in this case, I've got a MIDI device set up. So that MIDI device shows up here and I'll show you in a second how you can actually use a keyboard like this MIDI keyboard to actually control um, uh, this panel. Um, and uh, then you need to set up the routing um, for the thing. Now, in this case, we've just got the one universe. Um, so it starts at one, ends at one. I'm gonna redirect it to this particular IP address, which happens to be the IP address of the pixel stick. And the protocol is going to be as per the input. So it's going to send E131. Now you can actually do protocol transfer um, uh, conversions at this point. So I could receive it in as E131, but send it out as Artnet. Um, they're the only two protocols that supports at the moment. I haven't added any support in for uh, serial attached uh, or USB attached DMX. Uh, again, if someone really wants that, you need to speak up and let me know because uh, until someone wants it, I'm not going to invest the time in building it. Uh, now you can add as many of these as you like. You just click on the add button. You come in and say, well, if you find universe 100 through to 110, I want you to send that to a entirely different controller um, like that. And that would then, uh, whenever those, it would send 10 packets basically out to that universe there. And I'm not going to do that, but that's how you would, uh, that's how you would accumulate down here all the universes that we're listening for and redirecting etc. Uh, help if that was a little wider. All right, but let's delete that. We don't want that. Okay, we'll click OK. Okay, so let's um, let's get it up and running, I hope. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to connect it up to X lights. And the way in which we do that is we click the connect to X lights. And what it does is it connects over to the two copies of X lights. You'll notice that it's turned on output to lights on both copies. So they're now sending data and the flashing green dots here tell you that X uh, fade is receiving that data on both sides because both sides are flashing. Uh, if I was to come down here and turn output to lights off, you'll notice the flashing stops over here. Um, now, it, it can stop on as well. It, the, the fact that it's on or off doesn't mean anything. It's the flashing that tells you that it's actually receiving data. 
So that's good, that's receiving data on both sides, um, but nothing's happening, okay? So if I come into the scheduler uh, sequencer here and here, okay, so now output to lights is happening because one of those effects is selected. If I unselect the effect, it stops. Um, so let's come up here and we'll use these buttons. Now you'll notice there's four buttons here, there's four buttons down here, there's five buttons over here, there's five buttons up here. So that tells you that it's appropriately determined which things are there. And in fact, it's also copied the tooltips down. So whatever tooltips appear down here have also been copied up here. So you don't have to refer back to what's going on down here. But what you may want to do is you may want to grab your house preview up on either side so you can see what's actually happening. And at that point, I can get rid of those two. Whoop, I can't get rid of them because it's um, not very clever. Um, but what I can do is I can drag X lights away because you don't need them anymore. So let's uh, let's turn an effect on. So let's, let's move this back over to the left. Let's turn an effect on over here. And we've got a single strand, I think that is going on. Actually, let, let's do it, let's do red. Okay, so it's just a hard red on. And as you can see, nothing's happening. My lights down here are, are all off as you'd expect them to be because over here nothing's happened. And as we move it across, you can see that it brightens up. And as I drag it across manually, you can see it fades away according to how far across that slider is. Um, and that's just how it blends it in. Um, if I change the time, it changes how long it takes to fade away and to come back. Okay, I can also up here control the right hand side brightness so I can set the brightness and limit how bright it becomes and it still fades it away. So nice control. Over here obviously let's set it to green um, so you can see it a little bit more clearly. Um, let's uh, set that master level back up. Actually no, let's set that master level down so it doesn't wash out the, the image. It's still pretty washed out. There you go, that's probably best. Hopefully you can see the, the image up here in the right hand corner. And now we click the cross fade across and you can see it faded out to green. I'm not sure if you can tell that, but that's actually green. Um, maybe I need to set that master brightness even a little bit lower again. Wow. <laughs> All right, can you see it when it turns red? Now it goes yellow to red and back again. Okay, so uh, that's the crossfade concept in action. Uh, while it's over here displaying red, I could come over here, change it to a single line, switch it back, and now the, the pattern that I've chosen over here is now going. I could quickly switch it to fire, it's a fire effect, switch it back again. So you can see how it blends the two copies of X lights together and gives you control over what actually goes out to your lights. Up here, it tells you what the sequence name is that was loaded. Um, and it tells you where it's coming from. Now, if this wasn't coming from X lights, if this was coming from other, some other sort of sequencing software like Vixen or something else, um, then it would say something different in here. Uh, when it's X lights, this number here is actually the process ID and that guarantees that these strings are unique um, across these two things, but also the sequence name oh, there, up there is, is obviously different because I've opened different sequences in my two copies of X lights. So, the next thing is obviously, well, it'd be kind of nice if we could um, control these things using something like this MIDI keyboard. I've got a bunch of touch pads and some knobs and a keyboard. And so it'd be kind of nice to hook these things all up. Now I've done this already, but let's go in and set some of the things. Um, can you see the whole keyboard? Yeah, you can see the whole keyboard. All right, so let's, uh, let's set the master brightness. Let's start with that. So if you come up to, to this control here and if you right click the mouse, it brings up a map MIDI. And if you click the scan button here, it's basically waiting for me to touch something on the keyboard. So if I touch this knob here and I twist it, okay, you can see that it's, uh, it's filled it all in with the necessary fields, which recognize that that particular knob there is going to be a control for the master brightness. And if I reach over here and I twiddle the knob, you can see, hopefully, that um, the master brightness is working using um, that knob. Um, you can also come down here and you can you can map these particular keys here. So you can come up here and set scan. And so I'm going to press that tab button, tab there, click OK. And so 
If I come up here, set that to five, and I punch that button, it changes back to 0 0.5. So all of those buttons are controllable. These buttons down here are controllable. I'll hit the black key there. Um, you can control uh, the actual fade across. We can scan that. We can put that onto another button. And so now when I um, twiddle the knob, I can control the slider in the middle. And obviously over here with all of these buttons here, you can do exactly the same thing. I can right click, click the scan button, press a key, click OK. And now um, if I click on four and I click on one, you can see it jumps across um, to there. And I, I can go in and map each one of them. And so as I flick one and two, it switches backwards and forwards between different effects. So yeah, a um, MIDI controllable um, crossfade tool for um, controlling the outputs from two different copies of X lights to your light display, allowing you to um, yeah uh, set everything up. Now now the thing to remember, and I don't know if this came out in the earlier presentation, but you know I can have dozens of props here. Um, and sequence them all. If you know, if I come back to layout and I throw, I throw a star and a uh, tree and whatever else, um, set all, discard that, set something up. So I can come in here and I can put you know an effect on the the star, put an effect on the tree. Um, and it doesn't just have to be one effect, and they don't have to be all together. Uh, it can be a whole bunch of effects. Right, all those sorts of things. So all of those things there, let's say I wanted to tie that to one of these jukebox buttons. Well, I just insert a layer below, um, grab something harmless like the off effect, uh, line it up so that the start and the stop were at the beginning and the end, and that would look good. And then I'd come up here and grab this thing and say, all right, I'm gonna map, line this up with the tree, uh, layer two, and there's only one effect, so that's it there. And so now, when I press this button, it's actually gonna select this effect here, which is gonna play all of these effects. So uh, you know, when you press one of the buttons on these keyboards and you're using this crossfade tool, it's not just about putting out some data to one prop, it's about putting out data to all of your elements and you can send data to some and not others, you can do whatever you like. It's really just a way of controlling the output. So, hope you enjoy it, guys.